Hello guys, this is Doran's Movies and today I will be giving you the lore of Silver Moon, covering the creation, the history and everything that happened up to today. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Seven thousand years ago, a big part of the Highborn were exiled by the Night Elves. The Highborn, happy to be free from the rest of their race, decided to find a new home in the Eastern Kingdom. They did eventually reach the shore, but once on land, their journey proved to be unexpectedly brutal. The blizzards killed many of them and at that point they realized just how weak they were without the will of eternity, succumbing to various mortal problems they never dealt with in the past, such as starvation. However, they did reach the northern part of the continent and their leader Datremar Sunstrider at that point revealed his secret. Upon a powerful nexus of ley lines, Datremar poured a vial from the original Well of Eternity that he had previously taken from Illidan and with this magnificent power, a fount of energy tore through the skies of Azeroth, creating the Sun Realm. At this moment, they changed their race officially becoming now known as the High Elves and instead of worshipping the moon, they took strength from the sun. The High Elves would name their new land Quoltalas, meaning high home in their language and as the center of it, they created a city known as Silvermoon. Unfortunately, the native trolls were not so thrilled about this and not long after, they declared war. The High Elves barely held them back with their superior magic, but it was very clear that they needed to find another solution. Because of the war, they drew on immense amount of arcane power, which created the risk of a new Burning Legion invasion. So to counter this, they built these rune stones around the borders of their kingdom, known as Ban de Noriel, meaning the Gatekeeper. This was a perfect fix as it made their use of magic virtually undetectable by outside forces and at the same time it worked to frighten the superstitious trolls. The war was over and the much needed peace came which gave the elves a chance to expand their new kingdom. The mages created eternal springtime in their domain, hoping to never again experience the blizzard that so many of them have lost their lives to. On top of this, Silvermoon itself underwent major expansion and for the next thousands of years, peace and prosperity reigned. As expected, this didn't last forever as the trolls eventually invaded again. Much greater in number this time, the trolls overwhelmed the High Elves, however with the help of the humans that lived in the south, the trolls were defeated. For their help, the Elves shared the magic secrets to the humans, which would later spread to the other races of the Alliance. At the time, some of the Elves were very much against exposing humans to magic and revealing their secrets, but in general, the two races were very good allies. When the human mage city-state Dalaran emerged, it almost immediately formed a great friendship with Silvermoon and even many elves were a part of Dalaran. But even with the city of Dalaran existing, Silvermoon still had the reputation as the seat of magical learning, boasted by its great libraries. On top of that, Silvermoon was also a city of colossal size with various districts, banks, markets and other facilities. For the next thousands of years, Qualtalas was relatively peaceful, but the troll threat would once again emerge. 
this time aided by the invading orcish horde, the trolls wreak havoc upon the high elves, but luckily for them, Silverwoman was nearly left unscathed because of the protective rune stones that surrounded the city. Joining the alliance of Lordaeron, the elves did manage to beat back the enemy, but after the war they felt as if the humans needed them much more than they needed the humans, and because of the general unhappiness, Silvermoon was very much secluded from the rest of the alliance in the years to come. Again, peace came, but this time it definitely wouldn't last for long. Only a few short decades later, the massive Scourge army under the command of Artis marched into Quel'Thalas. Their goal was the Sunwell, the heart of the high elven civilization, and the elves would not give it easily. Many lost their lives, and even though the defenders formed a very strong front, their demise would come from within. A traitor known as Dark Andratir helped Artis dispel the runestones, essentially breaking the defensive barrier. The citizens were almost immediately evacuated, and shortly after, Silvermoon, for the first time in its history, fell. Silvermoon was overrun with undead, set ablaze, and utterly demolished. Artis succeeded, defiling the Sunwell and resurrecting the Lich Keltuzad from it, and with his goal accomplished, he left the ruins of Quel'Thalas, but the outcome was more than just devastating for the elves, with 90% of the population dying, including the king Anasterion Sunstrider. Ranger Lord Lord Temar gathered the survivors and managed to retake a part of Silvermoon and shortly after the Prince Keltas returned to the city. In honor of the Fallen, he renamed his people from High Elves into Blood Elves. Lord Temar was left in charge of safeguarding the remnants of the kingdom, while the prince went to battle the Scourge in Lordran, hoping to find a cure for his people's devastating magic addiction, which was a huge problem after the destruction of the Sunwell. Some years later, Keltas was <laughs> successful, and he sent some of his followers back to the kingdom in order to teach the survivors the new magic he learned, and they soon started using it. Now, this seemed like a gift from the heavens, as Silvermoon was very quickly reconstructed, and the Scourge was in large numbers driven away with the use of this new demonic magic. The fabled towering spires rose once again, and a big portion of the city was retaken from the Scourge. Chained crystals filled with fell magic dotted the city and empowered the many structures. At one point in time, the city even held an imprisoned Naru, whose powers were drained by the Blood Knight Paladin Order. As corrupting as this power was, the Blood Elves were finally managing to get back on their feet, and they praised Keltas for it. However, sadly for them, things would take a big turn when Keltas betrayed his people and defected to the Burning Legion. The prince, shortly after, launched an assault on his very own city, stealing the captured Naru. Later on, he attempted to summon the demon lord Kill Jaden into the world by using Envina, the avatar of the Sunwell itself, but that backfired as he was defeated and Envina sacrificed herself to stop Kill Jaden from emerging. The demon was banished and her powers returned to the original state, sparked by the Naru Muru. This essentially restored the Sunwell, quite a bit different to the previous one, combining both the arcane and the powers of the light. As the Sunwell was brought back to life, so was Quel'Thalas, this time on the right path. The majestic city of the Blood Elves is still in the process of being fully repaired and restored, but lore-wise it is much further ahead than it currently is in the game. 
the presence of the Scourge at this point should be close to non-existent and eventually many years into the future the city and the kingdom will reach their former glory. Alright and that is all I have for this video, do leave your thoughts and suggestions and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this and also like the video as it really helps out and keeps the content going. Thanks a lot for taking the time out of the day to watch this video and see you next time.